welcome to this new video. In this video, I'm gonna go over my workflow to capture and process this animation of Jupiter, like you see here. I will be going over the gear we're gonna be using today. Then we will go over the image acquisition. And lastly, we will go over the processing. This workflow applies to most telescopes and planetary cameras. If you want to use a DSLR, you can. It's just going to be very tedious because you're going to be capturing uh, sequences of videos and uh, that will be kind of cumbersome. So I would recommend sticking to the planetary camera because it will make your life easier. So starting with the gear, I have my optical tube assembly here, or the telescope. It's an AeriDisc triplet refractor telescope. It has a 1428 millimeters focal length and a focal ratio of an F7. And as you can see, it's pretty huge. If you've seen my uh, videos before with my five inches telescope, you can tell the difference. Um, this is an observatory level telescope, so it weighs about 23 kilograms, which is equivalent to 50 pounds. And to carry this telescope, I'm using this Ioptron CEM70 mount, uh, which has a weight capacity of 70 pounds. Uh, you can see here, I had to use two counterweights to balance the telescope. The nice thing about this mount is also it has a built-in eye polar telescope which helps me with the polar alignment and makes it way easier now attached to the telescope i already have my planetary camera and a 3x barlow lens the planetary camera is a zw osi 183 colored camera and it's dedicated for planetary imaging i also attached a uv ir cut filter to the camera this filter blocks undesirable ultraviolet or infrared wavelengths that can interfere with obtaining a high contrast image. Uh, the camera is also connected to the laptop and the mount is connected to a battery and this battery is what supplies the mount with electricity. I also connected a dew heater right here to the uh, dew shield because I was anticipating to have some dew later during the shooting session. So I have my dew heater already on and it's working. I put a summary of the gear in uh, this slide and uh, I also added my affiliate links in the description of the video. Right. So let's jump into the imaging part. I have my telescope already polar aligned and it's already turned on. I have my hand controller here. I'm gonna go ahead and point at Jupiter and see what we're gonna get. Today is September 23, 2024. The moon is close to Jupiter and Pleiades as well as you can see here. And uh, it looks great. I was able to capture some videos of the moon. You can see it here. and. Here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and point at Jupiter. So I am pointed at Jupiter right now and uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open fire capture. Now one thing, sessions like this usually take a lot of data so on average you will need to have at least about 500 gigabytes of space in your hard drive. Here I think I have yeah, I have about 625 gigabytes of data, so we're good. And fire capture is up. Jupiter is already here in the center of the sensor. And one thing you want to enable is the auto center planet. If outside the region of interest, then I'm going to keep my reticle enabled and I'm going to crop it a little bigger than Jupiter. So that looks pretty good. We can see here one of the Galilean moons and 
you can also see the great red spot so it's gonna be a nice animation today one thing also you want to change your settings here so your um, histograms are filled in into about 75 percent and i'm gonna increase my gain like this so that looks pretty good and i have my auto center setting enabled histograms looking good here and i am in good focus as well so i'm gonna go ahead and hit the running man and we have about two hours so this is gonna be about 120 frames i'm gonna put 150 frames just in case and each frame is gonna be a video so each video is gonna be 45 seconds and and the reason why i chose 45 seconds because when you're capturing a video anything more than one minute will start showing blurriness due to the fast rotation of jupiter so you want to make sure you do not exceed one minute i keep it at 45 seconds just in case and i'm gonna go ahead and start my capturing uh, just in the beginning here i'm gonna adjust my frames and gain so i can get good setting and i will let the software make the captures for me one thing also if your polar alignment is not accurate the planet might drift and might go outside the sensor so just check on your setup every 30 minutes just make sure that the planet is in the frame and yeah we'll just wait two hours and then we will be back and see what we got and we will process the uh, images next all right now the recording is completed and the telescope is back into the zero position i'm gonna put my stuff inside and we're gonna go inside and start processing the picture welcome back i have my files ready in this folder you can see fire capture creates a video for your acquisition and creates a text file and this text file has all the data relevant to the video that you captured now i don't i usually don't use those text files so i'm gonna go ahead and sort my files by type i'm mostly concerned with my video files so i'm basically gonna just select the video files that i got the 150 videos here and i'm gonna launch auto stacker then i'm gonna drag drop all these video files into auto stacker the settings by default you mostly don't need to change any of them uh, the image stabilization you want to check planet dynamic background the automatic quality estimator and reference frame is automatic unless you want to pick one on your own and here you want to put your anchor points on the left and you want to set your brightness in a way that it will detect the planet okay and you want your access point to be big enough to be inter interlacing like this now you don't want your anchor points to be too small like this because the planet will look very pixelated and you don't want them to be very large like that so you want to pick something that looks something like that all right now i'm gonna go ahead and analyze the video and this is gonna estimate the quality of the frames in each video now we're looking at the frames here if i draw a line we're looking at about 35 40 percent so i'm gonna leave it at 40 maybe i'll do 40 35 percent so basically auto stacker is gonna go ahead and it reiterate on all the frames on this video and it will pick the best 35 frames to stack I'm gonna check the RGB align on. I usually don't check the sharpened and normalized because I do that later in Wavesharp. And I do not check the drizzle because I don't see any difference in the quality of this drizzle option. A drizzle usually enlarges the image a little bit uh, by a factor that you pick here. I usually don't see a big difference in the quality of the pictures and also it takes about four times more time to process the the video so i don't usually check that option i'm gonna go ahead and click stack 
and auto stacker is gonna stack all it's gonna go over all the videos and do the stacking for us and I will see you when the processing is completed and the stacking is completed as you see here I'm gonna close auto stacker and I'm gonna go back to my folder so the next step is opening Wavesharp and because we have 150 images we're gonna open we're gonna use the batch mode here I'm gonna go to the batch tab select batch and I'm gonna go to my Jupyter file and I'm gonna select all my images here I'm gonna select open here are the images you can see I all right here this is the great red spot the next step is sharpening our image you can see the options here in wave sharp I'm gonna select the RGB mode first and I'm gonna use those sliders to increase the sharpness of the planet as you can see here so here I'm gonna go ahead and increase you can see the sharpness improved but the noise increased so you can enable the denoise here like that and now we have an acceptable sharp image here i'm gonna go to the show histogram and i'm gonna do my rgb balance and you can see the histogram here is a little bit underexposed so i'm gonna go to the luminance increase the exposure slightly and i'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit now as you see here this is the rgb curves the red gets a little bit behind so i'm gonna just improve my curve a little bit and move the red a little bit and you can see io more clear here you can see nicer colors of jupiter if you like those presets you can save them but i'm not gonna do that today uh, i don't need to and you can also save the preset for the sharpening so we got a good sharp image of jupiter here i'm gonna go next and i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the batch again and i'm gonna click save batch and this is gonna create a new folder called process you're gonna click yes on that it will create the folder and it will output all the sharpened images into the process folder you can see here io is moving it was probably behind jupiter you can see it right here starting to move away from jupiter all right now that the processing is completed i have all my images here I'm gonna go ahead and open Wavesharp again. I'm gonna close Wavesharp, open it again. I'm gonna select the, a new batch and this time I'm gonna go to my processed folder, select all my sharpened images and here I'm gonna name the animation Jupiter animation September 23, 2024. You can choose your frame rate here uh, 24 is okay you can you can you can make it 20 to make it longer if you like I'm gonna leave it at 24 it will look more natural this way and I'm gonna you can you can do the animation this way you have a couple options here use region of interest I don't check that usually because I want the whole frame to be processed and the second option is reverse at the end and I'm gonna check that because it's gonna reverse the animation at the end and I'm gonna click GIF here and it's gonna ask to put it in another folder and here you go it's processing the animation and you can see the movement of Jupiter right here the processing is now completed I'm gonna close wave sharp and let's see the animation that we got and here is our animation as you see here the great red spot is moving and you can see io also moving here you can see also that the brightness changes sometimes there are clouds the seeing wasn't great the, the this night so you can see it's a little bit uh, fuzzy 
but uh, I'm still happy with it. You can see the details of Jupiter right here. You can see the rotation of Jupiter and I enjoy seeing Jupiter's rotation. It, it never ceases to amaze me. I hope you found this video useful. If you liked this video, please subscribe and like the video so more people can see it. And I will see you in future videos. Take care.